Good morning. Good Saturday morning, I guess. It is Saturday, July 20th, and this is your coffee talk for this week. And today we're going to chat a little bit about the five mistakes that I want you to avoid so that you can make amazing progress with your fitness journey and your transformation journey. But first, let's talk a little bit about this talk being brought to you by our two nutrition courses that we have with Beachbody. Um, one is called Ultimate Portion Fix, and you use these awesome little containers, and we'll chat, chat a bit about that. And then the other one is To Be Mindset, which you use a tracker, this tracker, a w awesome water bottle with all the catchphrases on it. Here's the deal. A lot of people ask me, which one should I choose? Which one's better? And here's my input. I have made amazing progress with both nutrition plans. Um, last summer, I lost about 20 pounds with To Be Mindset. And then this year, I've lost about 13 pounds so far with Ultimate Portion Fix. And I'm really leaning out and shredding, like getting shredded, and I'm loving it. I'm like unveiling my muscles. Um, so here's the deal. Which one's better? Well, I personally love both of them. And I'm not sure I would be so far along on my journey after um, my last pregnancy if it weren't for both of them. And let me give you a little bit of background. I was coaching for years, like five years before getting pregnant, maybe four, four and a half, I don't know. Anyway, and I hit like an awesome point that I felt comfortable with in my body. And I felt muscular, I felt strong, I felt lean, and it was the longest period of time I have ever, ever, ever kept consistent, let me get rid of this, kept consistent with my um my uh, transformation, right? I didn't yo-yo. And if I did, it was like a couple pounds, maybe like three, five pounds, which is totally normal, right? So I went into my pregnancy thinking I am totally going to rock this. I mean, I was pretty obnoxious in my head about it, not to other people, but in my head. And I'm like, I'm going to rock this. This is going to be the best pregnancy I've ever had because I have always gained 50 about pounds with each of my pregnancies. And so I felt like super confident that I wasn't going to do that again. And then life hit me and it hit me hard. The first trimester, I was the most nauseous I've ever been and the most tired I've ever been. And I had a hard time even wrapping my head around certain foods, let alone portion control or anything like that. I was just eating carbs constantly and not just any carbs, like bread. I was eating bread constantly trying to keep my nausea at bay. Okay. And so my very first trimester, when you're really not supposed to gain any weight, maybe a couple pounds, I gained 12 pounds right off the bat. And then I had like one thing after another hit me with my family and it became the most stressful pregnancy I've ever had in my entire life. And so that like second to beginning of my third trimester was just all stress in like in a like I was visiting family members in a hospital I was trying to take care of people that I didn't know how to take care of I mean it was so stressful and I became even more of an emotional eater that I already am and then the last trimester the very last phase of my, I would just say the very last month of my pregnancy I um, was late. I, my, my due date came and then left, and I literally became a crazy woman. I was laughing hysterically, weirdly, at my husband while eating like a whole pound of chocolate five days after my due date, six days after my due date. I think I probably ate a full pound of chocolate almost every single day after my due date, and he was born 10 days late. So in that last like two weeks, I probably gained another eight to 10 pounds, which is also a time frame in which people usually don't gain any weight. So it became the worst <laughs> when I thought it was going to be the best. It became the worst pregnancy I ever had. I was uncomfortable and I was in a ton of pain and not for any other reason other than all the excess weight on me. So I gained an extra 55 pounds from, from my pregnancy, which was the most amount of weight I've ever gained. And I worked out the whole time, but it was hard. Like I was so overweight that it was hard to work out. And um, obviously like just pregnancy and labor and delivery alone, your muscle tone just starts going away. So 
Um, I came after, like, after giving birth, I had a good, I want to say 40 pounds to lose. After giving birth, I only lost 10 pounds. And I kept that, like, I was at 170. And I was at 170 for months. So when people were, like, literally asking me, like, you know, the crazy things people say when you're pregnant, they were literally asking me, so how long do you think it's going to take you to lose the weight? And I was just like, holy crap, stop talking to me about this. Like they were expecting like some amazing, awesome transformation and I couldn't deliver. I was not delivering this, like I delivered a baby, but I was not delivering this awesome transformation. I was working out, but like nothing was, like it wasn't working. My fitness, I was feeling stronger, but I wasn't losing the fat. And I had to say, stay so calm in my mindset to not just totally flip out. <laughs> and then we had a, uh, what was it? Oh yeah. And then we had this trip with Beachbody. So we were around all these Beachbody coaches, um, people who've had transformations. And there I was a whole 35 pounds overweight and didn't have anything to show for. I was like, I was okay with my body because I knew what happened. And I wasn't like beating myself up because I've grown so much since like in those five years as a person but I was still hiding myself in my pictures. I was still covering myself in my um, cover-ups. I was still just not showing. I wish I took more pictures of myself then, but I didn't. Um, I hid, right? And I hid behind the baby who was so adorable and had red hair and it was easy to hide behind him. Um, and then came To Be Mindset. And when To Be Mindset came out, I started seeing the light. And at first, I was scared. I'm like, okay, so we're coming out with this nutrition plan, but what if it doesn't work? And that kept going through my mind a lot. What if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? But I decided just to like dive in. And so I bought the program and I watched all the videos and I started doing what it said. And in the My Tracker, which comes with the To Be Mindset program, I did what it said. I stuck to the program fully, 100%. I tracked everything. And as I did, my weight started to drop. And so to be mindset taught me so many things, not just how to lose weight, but it also taught me where my mindset should be throughout losing weight. And it helped me get back into the game. And I know a lot of people have a hard time getting back into the game. And this was really big for me. It, it got me back into the clean eating that I used to thrive on and loved and started to feel good about myself and knew the changes it was making on the inside and the outside. So to be mindset was amazing. It helped me just kind of get my mind right and visually see my, my plate and know what should be on it. And it gained, it helped me gain a lot of confidence. Then um, so I lost the 20 pounds and then a good like six months went where I personally hit a plateau and I wasn't getting anywhere. I did program after program after program with nutrition, uh, with fitness, my workout programs, but I wasn't making progress anymore with my, um, nutrition. And honestly, it wasn't the program. It wasn't to be mindset. It was because I wasn't all in anymore. I had gotten this like confidence or arrogance, I would say with eating and I started slacking off again. I wasn't tracking fully. A different phase of my life was coming and I needed something more structured. And then came ultimate portion fix. And when I started doing ultimate portion fix, I was kind of like easing into it, but then I fully committed to timed nutrition. And that is exactly what I needed. I needed something that was going to kick my butt with nutrition and say, this is what you have to eat. This is when you eat it. And don't even try to go off course because you're not really following the plan. Then it was, it was structured enough for me to know that it was going to work. And I went in a hundred percent. Now, let me tell you though, I wasn't saying, oh, this is totally going to work. This is great, blah, blah, blah. I actually needed somebody to tell me that it, was, that it probably wasn't the best move for me, for me <laughs> to go 100% in. And if you need that person, let me be that person for you now. I'm not sure if you should do it. No, I'm just kidding. You need to go 100% all in on this. The timed nutrition piece of Ultimate Portion Fix is what got me way past my plateau. And it was the fastest I ever lost weight with any nutrition plan. So if you're thinking like, 
which one should I do? I think it really depends on where you're at in life. If you need something super flexible just to get you back into the game and need and something that you need to work on your mindset, like you're not you're not even in the game at all, then maybe to be mindset might be the thing for you. But if you need something that's going to like be structured and know that you can't find loopholes, like you just can't even see it. You can't even find a loophole in the program and it needs to be structured. Maybe time nutrition with ultimate portion fix. Maybe the regular program with ultimate portion fixes for you. So you have to decide. And here's a couple things that you should know. To be mindset, you need to write every single thing down. Okay. So if that is something that you're not interested in, then I would not go with to be mindset ultimate portion fix, you have to be somewhat prepared ahead of time to be able to um, eat your containers. So you have to know, do I have fruit at home? Do I have protein that I can grab? So like little things, it always helps to be prepared ahead of time. I mean, obviously it helps to be prepared to type ahead of time in both, but ultimate portion fix, you really should be prepared ahead of time. It makes life so much easier. I find for me right now in the stage of life I'm in that it's easier for me to prepare ahead of time than it is for me to constantly go back and write everything down. So right now I don't even track what I'm eating. I just know what it is ahead of time, if that makes sense. So if you have more questions about those two and need to know, decide which, you know, which two are better for you. Um, I might do, a, I think I'm going to do a whole blog post about it so you can refer back and forth to it. Okay. So the five mistakes, let's get off of that topic, but the five mistakes that I want you to avoid when it comes to your nutrition and that will totally, if you do these, will totally derail your, your um, progress, like 100% derail your progress. Let's talk about them, okay? First ones first. Taking advice or letting someone else's opinion get into your head who doesn't know where you're at, who doesn't have your best interests in mind, and who hasn't struggled with this in the past or has the results. So here's what I'm talking about. I decide, let's, let's use me as an example. I decide um, I'm going to do to be mindset, right? And I'm going to start writing down everything and I'm going to carry this cute tracker around and I'm going to carry my water bottle, right? And I'm going to drink and all that. And one of the things about to be mindset is I'm not going to have any um, starches at night for dinner, okay? And I decide I'm going to go out to dinner with friends and the um, bread comes around right when they sit down and they're like, oh my God, this is the best bread I've ever had. Ashley, you've got to take a bite. And I say, oh no, thanks. That's cool. And they're like, no, come on, seriously, take a bite. And I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. Um, no, thank you. And they like, totally are like forcing it on me, which by the way, people do that. Okay. <laughs> um, and then they're like, Oh, are you on some crazy diet? And you start like feeling insecure and you're like, well, no, I mean like, yeah. And, and they're like, just take a bite. It's only once. Like, seriously, it's like crazy people in high school trying to push drugs on you. And anyway, you're like, no, thanks. And you start to let them get in your head and you're like, oh, well, maybe just tonight is no big deal. Or, and even though you didn't want it to begin with, and that's the problem, letting other people get in your head, even though you didn't really want that thing to begin with, that's a huge problem. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to literally put blinders on, put them on and just know that they're not where you're at right now whatever it is. Maybe they never had a problem losing weight. Maybe they never gained weight to begin with. Maybe they do have a lot of weight and they're just jealous because you're, they, they're like jealous of your discipline, right? Whatever it is. And, um, I don't want you to hate them for it. I want you to just peacefully be like, no, thank you. And move on and change the topic and talk about the salad you ordered and do something else to get their mind off of it so that they're not pushing it on you. Do not tell them, oh, that's not really good for you. You shouldn't be eating it. That will not be a good thing. So I need you to put blinders on and believe and trust in the system that you're doing, okay? That is so important to believe and trust and turn your belief up. I mean, turn it up high because this is gonna get you amazing results and you are gonna feel amazing, not just because you look amazing, but because the inside you're feeding your body right. And I promise you with both of our nutrition programs, you will feel amazing and you will gain energy and you will start 
getting results that you've been really dying for to begin with. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, falling off track in the name of balance. Okay, so I <laughs> I get this a lot, and this is kind of going back to that person at the at the table at the restaurant saying, "Well, you gotta have balance. Go ahead, have that martini. You gotta have balance. Have a piece of bread. You don't do this very often." Well, I mean, fact is, we're Americans. We eat out pretty often, all right. And you can always find the reason to have the thing, right? So the birthday, the anniversary, the vacation, the this, the that, there's always something going on. The holiday, the whatever, doesn't matter. Oh, it's Friday night. Oh, it's Saturday night. You can always, 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 oh, I had a hard work day. You can always find something to give you, give you the balance attitude. But let's talk about balance for a second. If we're really gonna talk about balance, I want you to think about this when anybody ever tells you balance, okay? Let's think about the um, top areas of life where we set goals, okay? There's six of them that I believe. Faith, family, fitness, finances, food, and, and then I wrote environment, which would be like where you live, how you live, all that stuff, right? So there's six. So let's think of a spoke, like a wheel, okay? So you have a wheel. All right, have a wheel, and we're gonna write these spokes. Am I saying is that the right word? Spokes, spokes on a wheel. So we have these spokes on a wheel, and there's six of them. And we're gonna go faith, family, finance, uh, friends, fitness, and uh, oh, food is one, and uh, environment. So let's just say in each of those areas, we're gonna rate ourselves, and in the middle would be one, and out here would be ten. Okay, and we go around and we rate ourselves for each areas of our life and where we feel comfortable about it. And let's just say it looks a little bit like this. So all areas, we're just, this is an example. All areas are doing pretty good except for this one. And this one's fa um, fitness or food or health, let's just say, right? And we connect those dots and we have a circle. And then this little divot, right? So here's our new wheel. Our wheel goes around and then it comes in and goes out. Now think of, think of like a wagon or a bike or something. If you're trying to ride around on that wheel where there's a huge cutout of the wheel, it's gonna take a long, long, long time to get where you are at because it's gonna go boom, 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 right? So now think of that wheel as your life. And those areas are the different areas of your life. And if that one area is so bad and really needs to be worked on, then you have extreme unbalance, right? So instead of thinking of balance with your nutrition or balance with your fitness, that's only one area. I want you to think bigger. Think your whole life vision, right? If that area of nutrition and health and fitness is so out balanced, like needs a lot, a lot of work, then you need to put energy into that area to make it, uh, to improve it. Okay. And so that energy is going to be imbalanced to the energy you're giving all the other areas. If those other areas are doing a really, really well, you can pull back a little bit on those other areas and really hone in and focus on your nutrition and your fitness so that your health can be out there with all the other areas in your life. I would rather you look at that kind of balance than, oh, I need balance in my nutrition because I need that Oreo or that that brownie. So like, think of it differently. Switch, switch the script in your head. Switch your mindset and start thinking differently about balance because people will sabotage you or try to sabotage you in the name of balance, all right? If something needs to be improved in your life, you need to put focus in on that area. Same thing with like your marriage. If your marriage is falling apart, you need to hone in on your marriage and put extra energy into it to help it get better. Same with any other areas. Finances, if you are drowning in debt, then you need to focus in and work hard on finances to help yourself get out of that hole. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. So when people you know, say something in the name of balance, I need you to really think about where you're at and where you want to be and the fact that you're gonna have to put some extra energy into that area to m improve it, 
Okay, so your energy can't be spent 100% in every single area of life. So you're going to have to pull back in a couple little areas. And if one is eating chips and going to um, a social where it's all about food, maybe that isn't the right thing for you to do. So totally, totally up to you, but I'm just giving you my experience. Okay, that's number two. Um, another thing about that real quick before I move on is my story after I had my um, last pregnancy is I started trying to eat the way I did prior to getting pregnant and I didn't understand why it wasn't doing it wasn't working and what I realized is my maintenance phase is not the same as my weight loss phase I hope that makes sense so before I got pregnant I was able to eat a little bit more balanced when it comes to having treats like eating a brownie sundae every once in a while, or having a little bit of a piece of cake when I go to a, a birthday party, right? But that's not the same as a weight loss um, phase of my life. In my weight loss phase, eating that little bit of cake or having that brownie sundae would 100% derail me and get me off track and not help me stay in my not help me establish new habits and it will make me move back multiple days in a row. So let's talk about the next one. 3. When you end up slipping up or eating something that you didn't really want to I don't want you to beat yourself up when you're down. This is so big and and it really a lot of these actually all of them have to do with mindset beating yourself up when you're down is like saying um to your kid when he falls when he's like learning to ride a bike and he falls over it would be like you being like ah oh, you're such an idiot riding a bike is so easy why aren't you just doing it like, don't we say that to ourselves when we screw up? Like, why don't you just stay on plan? Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. Why did I eat that piece of cake? Like, these are things you can't be saying to yourself. It's not motivational at all. And you need to give yourself self care, self love if you want to get anywhere. So I want you to think of running a race. Like this is a race. And you want to get there as fast as you can. And if you were had like a best friend running a 5K and it was her first 5K or her 10th, doesn't matter. And, and she invited you to come and cheer her on. And she started like slowing up in the middle of the race because she was getting exhausted. Would you say, oh my God, why aren't you going faster? This is ridiculous. Why can't you just stick with everybody else? No, you wouldn't say that. You'd be like, go, go, you're doing awesome. You can do this, you can do this. That's how you need to speak to yourself. You need to speak to yourself in a way of loving and caring, just like you would for your kids, your best friend, your parents, anybody who's working really hard to hit a goal, right? So get those blinders on, speak to yourself kindly, get, um, number, um, yeah, get yourself right back on as soon as you, um, if you fall off, you're going to fall off. Everybody falls off. Get yourself right back on the very next meal. You're there. Don't beat yourself up for it. Don't work out extra because you ate something extra. Just get right back on plan. Don't look backwards. Okay. Number four, do not rely on motivation. Motivation. When people rely on motivation, they never get started. Literally, I've, I've been hearing people say this for years. Every time I invite them to a challenge group, um, I invite them to something that we're doing and they literally say, oh, I just can't find the motivation. And that is the biggest lie that you can say to yourself ever. Motivation does not start, like you don't start with motivation. You start with a plan, you start with an action, you start with a decision. And the moment you start taking action is when you start seeing a little bit of results. And the moment you start seeing a little bit of results, that's when motivation kicks in. It keeps you going because you start seeing results and you want to keep going. Motivation does not happen just like, oh, I'm motivated. It doesn't happen like that. You create motivation. You find the things that keep you motivated. You don't just find it out of thin air. So do not rely on motivation. And number five is Thinking one day or even three or four days won't make that big of a difference. So I used to do this a lot. I used to say, I'm on vacation or I'm away for the weekend. 
not caring what I eat for like a couple days isn't, ugh, it's just a couple days or it's just one day or even it's just one meal. Here's the deal. I know myself, if I say that, I eat like a glutton. Like I don't even, if I'm not thinking that I should be healthy, if I don't have that mindset of um, what goes into my body really matters, then I overeat and I overeat a lot and I eat some really bad, 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 bad things. So the mindset of not caring is so detrimental. On top of that, if you're full, if you're like intentionally not being on plan or not caring what you're eating for one day, two days, three days, four days, it will be so hard to get back into habit, to get back into things. One day, eh, but once you go to two days, three days, four days, you're, you're really screwing yourself over by that. Getting back in is the is is such um a mind game so the fur the further you're off the the harder it is and i don't want you to derail yourself like that having a treat is not a big deal if you're planning for a treat but going a full day or two days or three days of saying ah what the heck i'm on vacation or ah what the heck i'm i'm away it's not helpful and it makes it very 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 difficult to get back on and so your habits are so important. I want, I want you to just like realize that your habits are little gifts and they're a gift to yourself because when you create a habit, now you can spend less energy on making that. Like once it's established, you spend less energy on it. So do not sabotage your habits. Can help, please. <laughs> do not sabotage your habits by um, a decision of not caring care about yourself, love yourself enough to try and to stay on those habits, to try to establish them so that you don't have to spend so much energy on it in the future. So those are your five. Uh, to wrap it up, I want you to keep your blinders, blinders on, trust in the system, turn up your belief, know that this, these work. 2B Mindset works, Ultimate Portion Fix works, I promise you they work and they don't just work for one or two or three people. They work for everybody I've ever worked with. And do I think one's better than the other? Not really. And I'm so grateful that I've been able to do both because they actually complement each other a lot. Um, so if you have more questions about that, let me know, but um, keep those blinders on. Don't let other people get into your head. You are awesome. Speak to yourself like you're awesome. Do not rely on motivation. Get into habits. Don't make a decision to get off those habits. Really work on establishing those habits. You will be so happy. This is kind of like a race, and if you treat it right, like a race, like stay focused on it, you're gonna be so, so proud of yourself and confident in what you can do. And if you're a coach, do this for you and do it for your people, your, your, your challengers, your boot campers, because the more you stay on track, the more you're going to inspire other people to stay on track. And the more you inspire others, you're just going to build this community up and you're going to be able to <clears throat> encourage and hold each other accountable even better. I think that's it. That's all I got. Do you guys have any questions? No. <laughs> awesome. Have an awesome weekend. Happy Saturday. Love you all. And let me know if you have any topics that you want me to cover in the future. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.